Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm. We are back again with another video to help you on your journey with Caternix quail and becoming more self-sufficient. Today, we're actually gonna talk about the top 10 most frequently asked questions when it comes to Caternix quail. However, we've got some themes going on, so this video is gonna be a little bit different. Doing my research on this video, I think this video could help more people raise Caternix quail and become educated than almost any other video I've done. So I'm very, very excited about it. I've tried to do this video a couple different times and it keeps going very long. Uh, but I think that there's a lot of great information in here and a lot of people will benefit from it. So bear with me. I've got some great information. And again, I've got some themes going on that we will discuss at the very end. So stay tuned. Before I do that, please support the channel by just hitting that like button. I greatly appreciate it. It gets the word out about Caternix quail and about My Shire Farm. And to be honest, it just makes me feel like I'm doing something good. So if you could support the channel by just hitting that like button and do not forget to subscribe. We've got weekly videos that come out to help you on your journey with self-sufficiency and Caternix quail. We also do a live Q&A every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where you ask the questions and I do my best to help you on your journey. So without further ado, let's begin, shall we? Number one, how long can you collect eggs before incubation? Well, our standard is seven. So we collect for seven days and we put them in the incubator. Um, we average about an 87 to 92% uh, fertility rate on those eggs. Um, and uh, obviously most of those hatch for us. Uh, so we're happy with those numbers. Seven days works best for us. Now, with that being said, a lot of people wait 10 days. A lot of people will incubate 14 day old eggs. Everybody does it a little bit different and that's okay. This, was, this is with our research, what we've done here. We've noticed that fertility drops after seven days about three to 5% a day uh, after seven days. So for best results, we do seven days. Uh, does that mean that we never do 10? Sometimes we do 10, depending on what we're wanting to do. Uh, but seven days is optimal. But if you wait 10, you're still gonna get a good hatch rate. If you wait 14, well, we've never waited that long, but some people do it. So this video is not to tell you exactly what to do and how to do it. This video is to give you the information so that you can make an educated decision on how you want to raise your Caternix quail. And that's really what I want to do is give you the information and you guys make the decisions. Number two, how do you store eggs waiting to be incubated? Well, we do, we collect eggs every day. If we were just raising Caternix quail to be self-sufficient for me and my family, then I wouldn't collect every day. I would collect once a week, I would put them in, and that would be that. Because we ship over a half a million eggs a year all over the U.S., and we ship uh, thousands and thousands of live quail all over the U.S. every year, we collect every day. The reason we do that is because we want to make sure that when we, when we ship out to you, they are as fresh as fresh can be in case there's any issues and you get a great hatch rate. We're averaging a 75% hatch rate on shipped eggs this year alone for 2021. Uh, so obviously what we're doing, I'm very happy with. I like those numbers. So that's what we do. We collect every day, but that is the reason behind it. If we were just raising for ourselves, I wouldn't do all that. Okay. So we collect every day. We put them on the counter in the trays and we just let them sit there room temperature for seven days and put them in. That's what we do. We don't rotate them, we don't turn them every day. We put them in the trays and just let them sit. We get great results from that. That's what works best for us. Now, other people put them in the fridge. Other people just leave them in the cage. Other people will put them in a wine cooler. Other people will collect them, put, her, put them um, in like their kitchen or something and kind of rotate them uh, multiple times a day. It just depends on what you want to do. Uh, but what we do is room temperature, set them in the trays and let them sit until we're ready to put them in. Uh, number three, 
When are eggs able to be fertilized after a new male? It's a great question. I get this quite a bit. And again, there's different answers. One of the themes, I said that there was two, there's actually three, I think. One of the themes is raising quail is not a science. There are so many different ways that people do it and are successful at it. So you just need to pick what's best for you. There's really not a wrong answer. There's some things that I disagree with, but I'll tell you what I disagree with. But there's a lot of different ways that, think that people do things and everybody has a lot of success with it. So don't overthink it, which is the second theme. Don't overthink it. Katernix quail for every other reason is mainly to be bred for meat and egg production. That's it. It's not for all the pretty colors. It's not for this. It's not for that. It's for egg and meat production. It's to be more self-sufficient and to have some sort of control over your source of meat and eggs. That's it, right? So don't overthink it. If you want to get into the genetics and you want to get into the colors, that's fine. That's your preference. But don't forget that Caternix quail is bred for meat and egg production, okay? So don't overthink it. Now, with that being said, our standard is a week. So when we put new males in, we switch our males out twice a year. When we put new males in, we will not ship those eggs until they're at least a week old. Okay, with that being said, we start collecting after three days to incubate them. Now, the fertility is somewhere around 60 to 70%, which is not great, but it's not awful either. And I'm not shipping them. I'd rather put them in and see what kind of eggs I'm getting or what kind of chicks I'm getting out of that cage. So we collect from day three to day seven and incubate. Our hatch rate again is, is a lot lower than what we're used to, but we still get a, a point of view on where we're getting from. So if you're incubating eggs after you put males in, you could start after day three. You're gonna not get a great hatch rate, uh, but you'll still get a decent one. Um, but we don't ship them until they're at least seven days old because we're trying to get the best hatch rate for you when you order eggs from us, okay? Now, with that being said, uh, some people will wait up to two weeks. I've heard some people wait a month uh, before they start incubating eggs. I think that's a little crazy. Uh, we've uh, incubated eggs after seven days just to see, and the fertility rate is just the same as if they've been together for six months. Um, so seven days is, is your, your full fertility rate, okay? Um, at three days, you're, you know, again, 60, 70% fertility rate, which is still fine. It's not, not the end of the world. Uh, but again, please remember, I'm just trying to give this information to you so that you can make the best educated decision on how you want to raise Caternix quail. Number four, how many quail per square foot? Well, we recommend three to three and a half. We recommend three quail per square foot for non-jumbos. We re recommend three and a half quail per square foot for jumbos. Some people recommend one quail per square foot, and some people recommend eight and a half quail per square foot. Uh, the one quail per square foot I get. The eight to eight and a half quail per square foot is, uh, it blows my mind, I, I, can't, I can't fathom that. Some people do it. Uh, I just, I don't get it. But with that being said, I'm going to give you the reason why we do three to three and a half so that at least you know where we're coming from. So, number one, the number one reason why hens stop laying eggs uh, is because they get spooked, they get scared. They, they need to feel very, very secure. So with that being said, three quail per square foot is going to make them feel secure, like they're part of a, a bigger group where they're not as scared, but there's still plenty of room. It's what works best for us. Again, we have a good fertility rate, we've got a good hatch rate, and we have an average of a 75% hatch rate on shipped eggs this year. So what works best for us 
is three to three and a half quail per square foot. We do three and a half for the jumbos because obviously they're a little bit larger. We wanna give them a little bit more room. So um, with that being said, uh, some people will do one quail per square foot. That is okay. The reason we don't do that is because it goes back to one of my points earlier. We raise Caternix quail and we sell Caternix quail because we want you to become more self-sufficient. Being self-sufficient, you need to be as efficient as possible. So with one quail per square foot, you're giving up a whole lot of space when you can get a whole lot more out of it. Uh, so it's mainly just a, uh, we want maximum production um, and maximum eggs. Uh, so one quail per square foot would be fine. I have seen some uh, fighting and territory issues when you give them that much space um, and they won't be as productive as far as egg laying goes, uh, but it does work. So again, I'm just giving you the information so that you can decide. Um, number five, can my quail live outside? I think that I might have given the wrong impression, so I want to clear this up real quick. We have a quail barn, obviously, right? This is what works best for us. If we were raising quail for meat and eggs for just me and my family, they would absolutely, without a doubt, be outside, for sure. Raising quail outdoors is a whole lot easier than raising quail inside, hands down. However, you will get much more production if they are inside for different reasons. So, we're willing to do the extra work because again, we are a quail farm. We are a quail breeder. So we ship a half a million eggs a year, thousands of quail. We ship all over the US. There is no way we can do our operation outside. It just would not make sense. So we do inside. We try to make them as comfortable as possible. We try to be as ethical as possible, but we do inside and there's nothing wrong with inside. If we were just raising it for us, outside works so much better, uh, so much less worry, um, but you will not get as much production out of them as you could. They do need between 16 to 18 hours of light to be maximal, to produce at a maximum level, right? They need to make sure that there's no predators around, so you're at risk of that. Um, obviously, the weather will affect uh, the fertility rate and the uh, the egg laying. So there's a lot of different factors outside, but if you're just raising Caternix quail for yourself, there's a lot of less work and less upkeep when they're outside. So just keep that in mind. I'm not telling you which way to go. I'm just giving you the benefits and the cons of both. So there is more work to do inside. There's a lot less work to do outside. You're gonna get much better numbers inside than you will outside. So it really depends on what works best for you. And that is the reason for this video. That is one through five. This is actually going to be a two part. So next week, next Thursday, I'm gonna do th six through 10 uh, to help you on your journey with the top 10 most frequently asked questions. As this video is getting long and I wanna make you, I wanna help you understand uh, the reasons behind the answers that I'm giving. So I'm taking extra time. Now, the themes behind this is number one, there's many different ways to do this. So you just need to find out what works best for you. And it is okay. Whatever works best for you is perfect, okay? Number two, don't overthink it. Thing, raising Caternix quail is one of the simplest, easiest things to do. I promise. Now, when you have 6,000 quail plus, it gets a little, little, uh, it, it takes some time, you know, but not very many people have that many quail, right? A lot of you are just raising Caternix quail for you and your family and maybe a little side business on the side, and that's okay. It shouldn't take that much. It's not very difficult. It's not difficult at all. People are making it difficult. So just remember, the whole reason behind this is to be a little bit more self-sufficient and knowing where some of your food source is coming from because we never know what's gonna happen in this crazy world. So, take these top five answers, 
think about it and think what works best for you and do that. It doesn't matter who else agrees. I hope that that helped. Next week, we're gonna do again, uh, top six, or six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I hope that these top five helped. Next week is, uh, um, I think some better questions, um, but this was just you know trying to get started with you. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And until next week, uh, stay safe. And remember this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on the YouTube channel, I'll be going live. So if you have any questions about the top five most frequently asked questions we just talked about, feel free to jump on there, ask your question, and I will be more than happy to discuss it. Until then, stay safe. We'll see you then. Thanks. Have a great day.